Brave Podcast Network. I drew the duck blue because I've never seen a blue duck before. And to be honest with you, I, I wanted to see a blue duck. Well, it's an excellent blue duck. Congratulations. You just passed the first grade. If only all of us were as accepting as that teacher. Classic scene from Billy Madison, starring Adam Sandler. Which one are you? Are you the one that wants to color the duck blue? Or are you the one that is accepting of those of us who just color things differently? <laughs> this podcast says for you, maybe you want to color the duck blue, something you want to do in life that's different than everybody else, but you're too afraid to do it because you're worried about what everybody else thinks. Then this podcast is for you. Number 67, Silence the critics. Number 67, the blue duck. Three ways to silence the critics and stop being so afraid of what everyone else might think. Go get your dreams. I'm hoping after you listen to this podcast, you'll have the guts like Adam Sandler and Billy Madison to color the duck blue, not caring whether or not the teacher would accept you and pass the first grade or not. Hopefully you've got that great of a teacher. It's also for you if you have someone in your life that is doing things differently to help you go, you know what, I'm going to be more like that teacher. And instead of giving someone a big heaping dose of criticism, you can say, I really like your blue duck. You pass. But what about being afraid of what everybody else is going to think if you do life differently? Really, can I just be honest with you? It is stuck in your head. And I've been there. I've been right there with you. I mean, we all have that voice in our head that goes, oh no, what are people going to think of me? And really the voice is telling you, you're not good enough. You can't do it. You're not pretty enough, smart enough, thin enough, young enough. We say it's all the other critics around us that we're afraid of what they might think of us, but really it's your inner critic. And she can be a big old meanie. So it's time to silence her once and for all with these three ways to silence the critics, mostly your inner critic, to stop being so afraid. Because you're so afraid sometimes to, as they say, color the duck blue. <laughs> That's what we're going to say in this podcast. But really it's yourself that's preventing you from moving forward. We think about, oh, I want to start this business or... I really want to go to this special school, or I want to move, or I want to live across the country, or I, I want to move out of the country, whatever you want to do, and we don't do it because we're like, yeah, but what if people don't accept me for that? Yeah, but what if I don't fit in anymore? But what if it all works out? This podcast is here to give you the courage, as we say around here, to help you get your brave on to be the person that God created you to be not to be the person that you feel like you have to be in order to fit in, because that's eating you up inside, isn't it? I know I've been there. I've been that woman that's tried to fit in with this perfect evangelical Christian culture and just constantly been kicked out because I was a single mom. I've got three kids. I just did life differently. We weren't perfect. And that's a good thing, in my opinion. When you live life by coloring with a different color, you're learning things, you're on a journey, you're teaching other people things. People need your version of the blue duck because that's how we change, that's how we all become better, that's how your family will become better, and that's how you're gonna be happy. You deserve to live an abundant life of unmerited favor, said Jesus. It's called the Zoe life. So how are you gonna get that? How are you going to get unstuck because you're so afraid of what everybody else around you is going to think if you reveal who your true self is or if you go after what your true self really wants, you're actually making yourself unhappy and you're trapping yourself. So what can you do? Before I get to the three ways to silence that inner critic or other critics, and stop being afraid of what other people might think. I'm going to tell you a little story. It's a story about a sheep. Once there was a young and daring sheep who often strayed away from the flock and did things differently. We'll call her Mandy. She loved to explore 
even if it meant getting lost in unfamiliar fields and meadows. But today was different. She had gone too far and soon found herself alone in a really strange part of the countryside. The sun began setting behind the horizon as panic set in for our little sheep, Mandy. Suddenly, though, she heard something that made her stop dead in her tracks. It was the voice of her shepherd. The sound of his gentle, firm call, Mandy, seemed to fill all corners of this new world around her, beckoning her closer with each wave of his voice. The sheep eagerly followed along until finally reaching him at last. And as he welcomed back sweet little Mandy into his fold, she realized how much better life felt when she stayed close to her shepherd. Not just because it was safe, but because it opened up possibilities that were simply impossible when she was out by herself. From then on, our brave little sheep Mandy always listened closely for the guidance of her wise shepherd, no matter where they may wander off to next time. If you feel like you're on a scary journey and all on your own, I want you to know that I'm here for you. And I'm here to remind you that you're not alone. And you have a crowd of teachers that accept blue ducks (laughs) right here in our Get Your Brave On Brave Babe community. And we're here to help you go on adventures, but still with the safety of a loving shepherd. Do you see where I'm going here? (laughs) You know what God says. You know what Jesus says about how I am the shepherd and you are my sheep? And you think about how well he takes care of the shepherd? That's where the inspiration for this podcast really came from. And finding these three ways to silence the inner critics, to silence all the doubt and fear about what people might think so you can finally achieve your dreams in life, so you can get your brave on. Every episode, I share with you strategies to silence fear. And I don't know about you, but I often allow many voices vie for control of my mind, even if they're not aimed at me. Like I pay attention, you know, and and I hear voices of people saying mean things about people. I said, ooh, I'm kind of like that person maybe I should just be quiet about who I really am because then I'm not going to be accepted. That's not good. Imagine if you refuse to let other voices tie you up in knots and make you feel so anxious. Imagine what it would be like if you loved yourself the way God loved you. For he says, I love you for who you are, not what you do. Let me say that again. God loves you for who you are. He made you not what you do. God loves you for who you are, not what you've done. God loves you for who you are and not what your title is. And he made a hundred percent of humanity. So none of us are right and none of us are wrong. There are yellow ducks and maybe some of us are blue ducks and God made us that way and different for a reason. God loves you for who you are, not what you've done or what you do. So how do we though own our own thoughts and silence those inner critics? Because maybe there's a business you want to go for, a a job you want to go for, a place you want to live, and you're afraid to do it because you feel like your family won't accept you. You feel like, you know, everyone's going to think you're going to fail. Maybe even yourself. You stick close to the shepherd. Just like that little sheep Mandy discovered when she was out on her own, she got really scared. She was trapped in her own mind. That brings us to our very first strategy. Strategy number one on how to silence the critics and stop being so afraid what other people might think and move forward towards your dreams. Number one is walk closely with the shepherd. Walk closely with God. Jesus said in John 10, 4, my sheep know my voice and follow me wherever I lead. So if Mandy would have just listened to what she felt her shepherd was telling her about where to go for her life, she wouldn't have gotten lost. 
she would have been safe. And I know there's a lot of people that try to lead us astray, especially right now with the state of the church. I get it. I keep going back and forth about it. But imagine if you're just close to the one person who accepts you for exactly who you are because he made you and you spend regular time with him, you walk closely with him, not just like obeying a bunch of rules based on whatever church you go to says you have to do, but you actually start your day going, okay, God, can we go through this together? And you say, God, I need your help with this situation, with this child, with this boss, with this job. God, keep me calm. You spend time with him. You stay close to the shepherd. All the other stuff that people say about you, it doesn't matter that much because you've tuned into his frequency. You know, every single morning before I check my phone, before I check the news, I write down 10 things I'm grateful for in my journal. I start my day on gratefulness. I write down I am statements, the thing that God says about me. And then I write down my goals, my pathway to goals, my why, and I pray and I ask God to help me walk it out. And I imagine the result of what I want that day to be. And I ask God to help me. It's all my Brave Life Planner. You can download the whole thing, a free printout for you and a video that goes with it at getyourbraveon.info. I'll put the link in the show notes. And I do this because I want to walk closely with God. I want to be able to do what he's telling me to do. I want to go where he's taking me, not just where I think I should go or where I think other people think I should do. That's even scarier. When you're following the advice of other people for your life, other humans, instead of God, walk closely with the shepherd. When you're walking closely with God, it becomes very obvious the path that you should take. And those voices that vie for control of your mind, even your own inner critic, doesn't tie you up in knots anymore. When you're spending that much time with God, first day in the morning, like whatever, like that doesn't even matter what that criticism of that teacher or that boss said. I I know what God wants for me today. I've already, he's with me. It gives you this extra dose of confidence, like you just got this fantastic new pair of high heel boots, right? (laughs) You're like, whatever, watch me now. (laughs) So that's one of the first ways that you can silence the critics and stop being so afraid of what everybody else might think to live the life that you want to live is to do it closely with God. The second way that we can silence the critics and not be so afraid of what everyone else might think so we can live a life that we love, the Zoe life, the abundant life, is be able to figure out what is God's voice and what is not God's voice. In our story of the little lost sheep, Mandy, when she got lost, how did she get found? She heard his voice. But what if you don't know that voice and you're feeling lost? You feel abandoned. I've been there. I know. I'm so sorry. Here's how to find your way back. As you're spending time with God in the morning, you're walking closely with him. You're asking for his help. You're trusting his guidance as your shepherd. Then pay attention to his voice. There are a lot of voices right now everywhere that will get you angry and upset and want to tie you up in knots and criticize you. They're really loud. But once you train yourself to spend time with God and hear his voice, again, those other critics don't matter. One of the other things I do on a regular basis is I meditate. And some people might think this is weird, but Jesus meditated. It's like a deeper form of prayer and an intimate relationship with God. As I pray, I ask him for his help. And then I spend some time and put some classical music on or whatever. And I just, I'm silent and I just experience him and I ask him to show me what he wants and I listen. And then I begin to really see what he wants for my life. And what he wants for my life is different than what he wants for you life, your life. Our only job is to just pay attention and follow our shepherd. 
but you have to know his voice. And you have to be able to hear his voice and let it drown out all the other critics. One of the tricks I use, I mean, like Amanda, like, okay, like, or is God talking to you? <laughs> I don't mean, maybe a couple times in my life, I feel like I've actually heard an audible voice, but it's this inner knowing. And how do you discern, as the super Christian-y people say, God's voice from other voices? Is it about love? Because God is love, right? His name, God, means love. Everything about it is love. So if there's another voice that it's about hate and judgment and pointing out other people's sins, that's not God because that's not what God does. So if you're involved in anything like that, run, girl, run, little sheep, run, and go to the other side and know that if it is not Love, it is not God, because God is love. That's the easiest way you can say, okay, where is the voice of God and where is he taking me on this? Is it hurting other people? Is it making other people feel judged? That's not God. Don't go that way. Is it helping other people? Is it making other people feel loved? That's God. Go that way. Follow that voice of the shepherd. Let's go back to John 10, 4, what Jesus said. My sheep know my voice and follow me wherever I lead. That way, just that simple little call, once you train yourself to know the voice of love, you have no doubt that that's the direction that you should go. It's like, you know, Billy Madison having absolute confidence in the world that he could paint that duck blue. (laughs) I don't know if Adam Sandler likes this comparison, but whatever. So what happens when we walk closely with God because we know his voice and we can follow him and not care about what everybody else thinks and feel confident where our boots are taking us? That leads us to number three. The third strategy to help you silence critics and stop being so afraid of what everyone else might think with the way that you want to live your life is to choose to live a life worthy of the calling that you've received, no one else. We're all called to do different things. We all have a special gift. We're not all supposed to be the same way, think the same way, act the same way, and walk the same way. Have the courage to live the life worthy of your calling by following that shepherd. Mandy got a little lost in our story, Mandy, the little sheep. We're not going to judge her. We've all been there. (laughs) She got astray. But how did she go back? Because she heard his voice and she trusted him. And then what happened when she went back? He loved her. He embraced her. And she felt safe. You deserve to feel safe for who you are. I hope I, it's okay if I get a little personal on here. Hey, that's what podcasting is all about. That's why I left radio. I got more to say than in 90 seconds or less. When I wrote this down in my journal, here's what I wrote. Amanda, you need to live a life worthy of the calling that you've received. And I wrote down, I must be strong and courageous. Sometimes I don't want to. Sometimes I don't want to speak out and say the way that I feel because I know the community and culture I grew up in would kick me out. But then I realized, well, they kind of already did. So what's the point? I might as well be myself. And I must continue to share about Jesus, even if I don't really like the state of the church right now. And I must be healthy and loving. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you and I can feel angry about and have unhealthy reactions about. Sometimes I feel like my faith and my belief in a loving God and a caring Jesus has been hijacked by really mean people. But do I leave it and say, I wash my hands of that? I don't think that's the right thing to do. If I'm living a life worthy of my calling that I've received, I'm going to lean in and talk even more about the love of Jesus. I want to be more like Billy Madison's teacher. You know, I want to be more of that. I want to be that person for you. When Billy Madison colored the duck blue, she didn't say that's wrong. It's supposed to be yellow. She just said, I think it's a great blue duck. 
I want to be that person for you. I promise. I want to be that person for my children. That's the kind of mother I want to be. That's the kind of partner I want to be for my boyfriend, Sean. That's the kind of daughter I want to be for my mother. She's reinventing her life as a widow. For my sister, who's a mother to a special needs child. We all live life very differently. And that's all completely okay and necessary. I want to live a life worthy of my calling. And I challenge you to live a life worthy of your calling too. I just want to love. I love what Bob Goff wrote about love. He's one of my favorite authors. And this was actually about grace, which the two go hand in hand. Grace is God's unmerited favor. And he said that we should give away grace in unreasonable amounts, like it's the only size it comes in. So I know this society, we've been quick to fire off a tweet in criticism of somebody else's life. It seems so, well, it's the opposite of courage. <laughs> Instead, what if we were strong and courageous enough, living a life worthy of our calling, that we loved and we didn't criticize? That we continued to share yeah, but oh, that's not my Jesus. Hey, that God is love. So that, that's not the voice of our shepherd. That's not the way I'm going to be. I failed at it. I'm not always perfect at it. I'm trying my best to be better. Because I don't know about you, but I'm really sick and tired of allowing other voices to tie me up in knots and not being who I truly want to be. For silencing my voice because I felt like maybe I would get kicked out of the super Christian club if I said anything that they disagreed with or I mentioned politics or anything like that. Well, I don't want to mention politics. but <laughs> I just want to be myself and the woman that God has called me to be, which I feel my version of loving who I am, not what I do, is to say, hey, I'm here to help you live a more strong and courageous life and give you strategies to silence fear. Because I know what it feels like to be so afraid of what other people think. If you're in that spot, remember this moment. When my husband suddenly, my ex-husband suddenly left us, I was living right outside of Washington, D.C., in one of the country's most expensive areas, Fairfax County, in a little town called Vienna, Virginia. Beautiful town. And we were really involved in this church, great church, Fairfax Community Church. And I was the mops leader of that church and you know, taught Sunday school. And then I was on Christian radio in our nation's capital, the morning show host. And I just had my third child. And eight weeks after she was born, their dad left us with all three kids. And I was humiliated. And of all things, I was afraid to go back to church because I felt like, what's going to happen? What is everybody going to think if I walk into that church pushing a double stroller with my third newborn baby in one of those baby Bjorn wrap things. And that's the only way I could get all three of us in by myself into church. And everyone's going to go, where's your husband? They all knew me from the radio and they all knew me from teaching Sunday school and leading the mops group. Like my life had to be so called perfect, right? And I had this dear friend, Becky, she said, we, we, we miss you at church. Can you come back? She was one of the few people that knew what was really going on and that I had been abandoned. I was so humiliated. And she said, tell you what, I'll meet you in the parking lot and I'll carry the baby and I'll go in with you so you won't go in alone. Oh God, I love that woman. And then she gave me this nugget. Listen, I know you're worried about what everybody else might think, but most people are so consumed in judging themselves and worrying about what everybody thinks that they don't have the time to even notice that you're walking into church without your husband. It's like, yeah, you're probably right. You're walking around limiting your life because you're so afraid of what other people might think, but really they don't actually care. <laughs> I say that in all love. You're the one that's being the inner critic. 
Stop it. Stop being the one that's limiting your life. Stop being the one that is getting in the way of you being your unique self. Live your life for exactly the way that God loves you. Because he loves you for who you are, not what your title is in life. At that point, I had to learn that God loves me for who I was, not for my job on Christian radio. That wasn't like earning me a special spot of love for God. God loves me for who I am, not what I do for him. God loves you for who you are, not what you do for him. God loves you for who you are, not how well you fit in with all the other church people. Most of us don't feel like we fit in or measure up. And we're walking around judging ourselves and placing that judgment on God when it's not true. Because you know the truth of what Becky's comment was, as soon as I walked in and I told people what was going on, the Christian radio station I worked for and at the church, all I got was help and love. These are wonderful people. And I, then I was mad at myself a little bit that I hadn't reached out sooner. And I'd been hiding like that little lost sheep, Mandy, that I'd gone away from the leaders. And I went off on my own because I didn't feel accepted. And it was so painful being so alone and keeping that secret for so long. It did more damage. When I finally just said, okay, I'm a single mom now, secrets out. Nobody judged me. I just got love and the help that I needed. So then I could walk closer to the shepherd. Maybe there's something in your life that you feel like you had to walk away from God. I understand I've been there. I've made some huge mistakes. But instead of walking away from God because you don't feel accepted anymore, would you please stop believing in that lie? And instead, silence that inner critic and go, no, I'm going to remember that little sheep. It's really scary out on my own. I'm going to walk closer with him. I'm going to talk to him because I know he loves me for who I am, not what I've done. I know that he loves me for who I am, not what I will do. You can't earn good treatment (laughs) and you can't lose it. It's just life. So instead of running away and hiding like that little sheep, Mandy, if you truly want to get your brave on, silence that critic and go after the life that you dream of, then walk closely with God. Involve him in your life. Start every morning with him. Go get my free planner if you need some help on it. I'll put the link in the show notes. And learn what is God's voice and what is not. It's cracking open, open your Bible and read for yourself what he says. Don't just rely on pastors to tell you. Learn it on your own. Be able to discern what is God's voice and what is not and follow the love. And if you do those two things, walking closely, listening for his voice, you can finally have the courage to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. No one else. And maybe if you're like, well, no, I'm really confident being out on my own, Amanda. Okay, that's great. Would you spread that around? So maybe you're not the student that's coloring the duck blue. Maybe your challenge today and your rallying cry to get your brave on can be to be the teacher that accepts the blue duck and sees someone that's maybe living a life a little bit differently and not exactly the way the traditional evangelical world says we're supposed to, you know, show up and look with perfect beach waves or whatever. You say, oh, look at you. Man, God loves you so much. I love your blue duck. Because God made us all. And he never makes any mistakes. I just want to say thank you so much to my friend and fellow podcaster on my network, the Brave Podcast Podcast Network, Corey Mann. His podcast is called What Else with Corey Mann. It's fantastic interviewers. I look up to him and this was kind of stolen and inspired by him posting the blue duck clip on his Instagram and TikTok about not silencing creativity. Thank you, Corey, for the inspiration. Thank you for listening. And thank you for being such a fan of Get Your Brave On. 
If you could do me a favor, if you know someone who's feeling like a castaway, maybe feels a little lost, or maybe feels so afraid to move forward because they're afraid of what other people might think of them, could you share this podcast with them? I'm hoping it's going to give them exactly what they need. And if also, if it meant something to you, would you please feel free to uh, rate it on Apple Podcasts and leave a review? Because the more reviews we have, the more ratings we have, the more people find this hope. That would really mean a lot to me. And download that free Brave Life Planner. I know it will help you walk closely with God and be able to hear his voice and be able to decide what is his voice and what is not. And remember today, God loves you for who you are, not what you do. Refuse to let other voices tie you up in knots and instead get your brave on.